The way we document things matters a lot to our clinical coding in our admissions. Whilst Coding Matters has talked a lot about medical and even sometimes surgical admissions, today I'm excited to talk specifically about mental health admissions and how our documentation can really improve the way things are coded and therefore funded, as well as our clinical performance. Hi, it's Andrew here and welcome to Coding Matters. On this particular episode, we're gonna be talking about mental health admissions. And we have a lot of great focus on comorbidities and other complications that occur during those admissions and how to better document the reasons why people present for mental health admissions. I wanna particularly recognize our coding team in Nallon who have contributed very much to this uh, video and also to Dr. Hannah Miles, who's been a really key player in formulating uh, this video and the content. So thanks for contributing, Hannah. So the things we're gonna talk about today is redefining situational crisis that often gets used as a reason for admission or a diagnosis, when unfortunately it's not actually diagnostic terminology. Let's break that down in a second. We're also gonna look at how we document our clinical formulations, particularly around our diagnosis and our management and how we can try and incorporate those at an earlier time during our admission rather than in the, only in the discharge summary, which sometimes occurs in some units. We're also gonna talk about how we can document alcohol and drug abuse, which are common comorbidities with mental health, unfortunately. And those, that's an area that will increase the complexity of, of a lot of our acute admissions in mental health. Lastly, we'll talk about medical uh, comorbidities that arise or add complexity to mental health uh, admissions. So if you're new to Coding Matters, um, I'd encourage you to look back at the introduction video, but I'll give you a brief overview. When people are admitted as an acute inpatient, uh, whether it be under mental health, medicine, surgery or others, we have a principal diagnosis that informs what we call a diagnostic related group. So it's really a category of why the person is presented. There's over 400 of them that we use in Australia. Then we look at complexity that informs that DRG and there can be a range of complexity according to that specific DRG. And the secondary diagnoses and the complication procedures and management plan all contribute to the complexity. And that's really what we're gonna be focusing on is the low hanging fruit within mental health admissions that can improve the accuracy of our DRGs and the complexity within each of those. So situational crisis is often used as a term uh, to describe why someone has presented to hospital in the context of a mental health condition, either yet as yet undiagnosed or already known. Situational crisis is classified as a symptom or a sign, and therefore it's not a diagnostic term. It can't really truly be used in impression or an assessment in terms of clinical documentation. Instead, we can use diagnostic terms like acute stress reaction, adjustment disorder, or situational crisis. And in a minute, we'll talk about uh, clinical uncertainty and how we can express that. You don't need to be 100% accurate from the start, and you can express that through uh, qualifying terms that express that you are maybe not completely certain that that is the correct diagnosis. That's okay, that can change as the admission goes along. And it's also important that we are linking whatever that event is or the reason for presenting within the context of the underlying psychiatric or mental health condition. That really helps the complexity a lot. Here's an example of, of that used. If we do it have a six day admission for a situational crisis, and it's not linked with any other kind of mental health conditions, that comes up with a minor complexity and only $4,000 worth of funding. For a six day admission under mental health, we are really being underfunded for the amount of care that we're providing for that patient. And that is part of the reason why our health system is not doing so well on the monetary side. If we were to then reclassify that as a major depressive disorder with comorbid schizophrenia associated with acute decline in ability to cope due to social factors, you can see there we've linked an acute event with a chronic condition. And then that goes to major complexity and that will give us $14,000 worth of funding for that patient's admission. And that's more likely to cover comfortably the amount of care and investment of time that's going into that patient to help them recover. Here's another example that's specific to medicine, but it helps you understand the concept of complexity. If we have pneumonia and it's identified with an infective exacerbation of COPD with a situational crisis involved, that's a minor complexity of $4,000. If we were to have that same diagnostic related group of pneumonia related to underlying lung disease, but we were also to add an acute stress reaction because of that illness and impact on the person's mental health, that increases the complexity of the pneumonia presentation to major and therefore the funding goes up to $8,000. That's a significant change. 
And it's great to see the interplay between mental health and medicine that so often is actually separated, but in reality is just inextricably linked together. Um, in terms of discrepancies within diagnostic terms, we see that um, happen within a lot of psychiatric units or mental health departments. And we wanna really see more of that formulation being included early in the documentation whether it's that you're already on electronic medical record or whether they're handwritten notes or related to other systems like CBIS that we use in South Australia, including summaries or, or diagnostic formulations earlier on that can then be part of that patient record rather than the discharge letter will enable and empower those coders to give more specific information. And uh, I've included here on this slide a few uh, words specifically from coders that they would love you to hear if you're working in mental health. We talked before about diagnostic uncertainty. It's okay to be uncertain, and a lot of the time within medicine, surgery and psychiatry, when people first present, and even in the first few days, we might have a differential diagnosis of why they presented with the top one, but we may not be certain that that's the right diagnosis. We need time, sometimes a lot of time, particularly in things of the mind, in terms of neurology, geriatrics, mental health, sometimes we need weeks or months to confirm a specific diagnosis of those more major chronic conditions. That's okay. You can express that diagnostic uncertainty using things like a question mark or a query or saying likely, possible, probable. They all can then be coded in that category or change later if you eventually decide on a different diagnosis. So including that kind of terminology early, even at the point of admission, is really helpful for our coders. In terms of mental health and alcohol and drug use, we've seen that they are also inextricably linked. This is how people that are suffering from mental health conditions often self-medicate or try to cope um, with their conditions and sometimes there's a lot of role modeling that's occurred um, in, in their younger time or their family that has um, influenced some of these behaviors. So some of the terminology that we can use that's diagnostic are things like intoxication or harmful use, dependence, withdrawal, withdrawal with delirium, that's particularly in terms of alcohol withdrawal, but some drugs as well, or psychosis related to specific drugs. Those are terms that help us understand the impact of the, specifically the alcohol or other recreational drugs on that person's presentation. They help contribute to complexity. So I'd encourage you to see how you can utilize some of those terms when you have your impatience. Um, here's an example of a, a patient that presented with a fall uh, being the main reason and they had suffered a laceration of their scalp, but it was in the context of alcohol intoxication and alcohol dependence and then withdrawal. Um, you can see that that's a minor complexity if it was the main reason they presented was the fall and injury. If we kind of flipped it around and said that they were presenting because of alcohol intoxication and then had the fall and laceration as a complication, which is probably a more accurate um, series of events, that actually goes into a different category and a different complexity and we get um, two and a half times the amount of funding, which is more reflective of actually the amount of resources from the hospital that's being invested in that patient's recovery. Just as alcohol and drugs can add complexity to our mental health admissions, so can medical conditions and comorbid mental health conditions, because often things come in more than one. There may be one particular condition that's resulted in their admission that will serve as their principal diagnosis and their disease-related group, but there may be other comorbid mental health or medical conditions there, and they're probably an untapped source of complexity and part of just holistic care for our patients. You know, as someone that's an aspiring general physician and hematologist, I would be neglecting the care of my patients if I did not talk about and try and serve some of their mental health and emotional and relational needs whilst they're going through their chemotherapy for their lymphoma or whilst they're having their chronic transfusions for their severe thalassemia. And likewise on mental health side of things, um, there can be a lot of medical conditions and the complexities, particularly with a lot of the medications that we use for managing uh, psychiatric conditions that then impact their physical health. And sometimes it can be great to get a consult, whether it be the liaison team from psychiatry for our medical patients, or whether it be our medical registrars and medical consult team for our psychiatry patients. We can help each other get better outcomes for our patients. So here's an example of someone that's admitted with bipolar affective disorder for two weeks. And that as a minor complexity would earn the hospital $20,000. However, if we were to recognize that there are other comorbid um, sleep-wake pattern and anxiety disorders with that bipolar that required treatment during the episode, that'll increase the complexity of that same disease-related group of bipolar affective disorder from $20,000 to $33,000. You can see how much difference that would make to the hospital. Here's another example with the same kind of category and you can see how um, a person had dental pain during their admission for bipolar and we had an x-ray to assess that and maybe a consult from another team 
um, maybe some antibiotics or analgesia were prescribed for that dental pain. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but it adds complexity and therefore adds funding, and that's really important. In terms of major depression, you can see here an example of someone that was admitted for 16 days, a similar kind of funding of about $20,000. But if we were to address their needs of their anemia and address their um, osteoarthritic pain needs with analgesia for their knee, knee then we increase the complexity up to 38,000. That's almost doubling that amount for that admission, much better for the hospital and the resources that we can provide our patients. Same kind of example, if they had non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, so type two, and that they had a lower respiratory tract infection during their stay, it required a chest X-ray and some antibiotics, that again is increasing the complexity for a similar amount. Here's schizophrenia with a similar kind of uh, issue. You can see that at a minor level, schizophrenia earns a higher amount of money because they're often more complex and need more care from the hospital. But if we were to um, see that they have a complication of hyperprolactinemia and that we were using diagnostic tests to confirm that, that will increase the complexity significantly. So you can see just these somewhat insignificant, one might say, changes or things that we're doing somewhat routinely, if we document them clearer, they're actually gonna make a big impact on our, our hospital stays for our patients here. Another example of schizophrenia with a 30 day admission, usually we get paid $31,000 for that. If they had vitamin B12 deficiency and we were to diagnose and treat that during the admission, that increases um, to major complexity and a total funding of $58,000. This is really worthwhile our time. If we flip it over and go to, here's a medical admission, and maybe this is the consultant uh, psychiatry liaison team. Um, if for someone that's had a stroke um, and they are now hemiplegic, naturally that's gonna make a big impact on their mental health. And if we were to diagnose them with depression or adjustment disorder, that'll increase their complexity uh, a lot. And obviously that's a big difference for that person's life as well. So I'm going to summarize some of the things we've talked about today regarding mental health admissions and coding. We're trying to move away from terms like situational crisis um, or social crisis uh, to acute stress reactions and linking them specifically with the underlying mental health disorder, whether that's a new diagnosis or a pre-existing one. We want to document more of that diagnostic workup and thought process into our admission and progress notes rather than keeping it and saving it only for the discharge summary. If it's in the discharge summary, please put it into some of the progress notes so it's more accessible to our coding team. We want to document and qualify the complications of drug and alcohol abuse uh, as they can make a big difference and are often linked with a lot of psychiatric conditions. We also want to diagnose and document our medical conditions that may have arisen during the admission or may be related to medications uh, that we've prescribed for these psychiatric conditions. I hope that from this talk that uh, you've picked up one or two tips to improve your quality and specificity of documentation uh, in mental health. And I hope that that will really contribute to some coding improvements in your area. Thanks for listening.